Hi, my name is Russ Edgington. And I'm Alex Gerling, professional horse trainer from Germany. And we're ProfessionalHorseServices.com. We're ahead. here today um, uh, uh, basically uh, to do a little preview of our next video, which is The Taming of Total Loss, Volume 2. And in this video, um, we're going to focus really on two distinctive styles of riding and two distinctive training styles. Uh, one we're going to call uh, the modern style and one we're going to call more classical or traditional style. Um, we've got about seven different rides that we're going to be looking at on this new video. Uh, and, and in the process of doing the research, um, uh, one of our riders has recently made really big news uh, in the dressage world. So um, we thought that it was important to go ahead before the release of the video and talk about really what's going on in the world of dressage as it applies to these distinctive two training methods. Yeah, so this is really brand hot new stuff because uh, one of our featured writers in our upcoming uh, The Taming of Total as Volume 2, uh, volume because the volume has to get louder and uh, talk more for the words, yeah. Uh, one of these horse rider combinations uh, happens to be Adelinde Cornelissen and her horse Jerich Patzewal that were able to win the World Cup final this weekend uh, in 2012 in Hertogenbosch. And so by doing a little bit research on her I came across two short video clips that were featured uh, stunningly enough by the FEI TV channel uh, showing the slash highlights of her performances. And so uh, in the first video that you can find on our playlist. We will provide it for you. You can see her uh, doing a extended trot after the halts. It starts out with some minor irregularities. The horse is a little solid driven to the bit. So you can see that the contact seems rather heavy. Uh, and then there comes the next highlight with her zigzag half pass. In that zigzag half pass you will see in the right half pass an open gap mouse that is so wide open that you can see the teeth. Uh, in the upcoming change of bend out of the right half pass there will be a bend to the left and there will be a clear tongue display sideways out to the left. After the change of bend is completed uh, and she starts going to the left half pass now there will be a clear tongue display to the right sideways out of the mouse. Um, and at the end, the third highlight of this test is a canter period to the right. And in the very beginning of this canter period, you will see a flinging tongue out to the left, probably to the full extent. Uh, the reason why I'm mentioning this is, Russ, you had found some uh, interesting ruling uh, that refers to this here. Well, yeah, I believe that FEI has recently changed the ruling on, on you know, displaying mouth activity and, and more specifically the evidence of blood on the mouth. And um, Alex, do you have any more details on that? Well, the thing is that uh, Adeline Cornelissen had been eliminated at the VEC in 2010 because of a bleeding mouth and uh, the chef trainer... Uh, 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 Chef Janssen had found uh, that that was uh, probably for her uh, not so correct handled. She should have had a chance to come back again because the injury happened somewhere outside or whatever how they proclaimed it. Yeah, uh, And by looking at this here I have to say a horse that uh, shows that clear of a tongue activity that is also uh, considerable incorrect in terms of acceptance a bit of the bridle is way more likely to uh, bite his tongue within a performance and therefore I find uh, that uh, you all should go to this video and see the tongue displays they are really easy to see uh, and I would encourage everybody to do that that is for her Grand Prix test I'm uh, quite stunned to see this in the FEI TV channel as well uh, I'm very stunned to uh, uh, have to accept that she wins the class with those type pictures if this is her highlights yeah, I can only imagine how the rest was yeah. Alex what was the score of this test? Uh, 78 or 78 percent, I think, was the average. Uh, you can also look that up. Uh, uh, I was actually so uh, disappointed to see that that I didn't do any deeper research. She won the class, and I found, based on these three items, uh, I think uh, international judges have to review this little clip also. Okay. Well, we want to go ahead and remind folks to uh, stay tuned to our our YouTube channel and. 
and also um, be, be watching out for the Taming of Top Total Loss Volume 2 where we go much more in depth into uh, these two distinctive training styles. Russ, there is also of course a second clip that I found on the FEI TV channel which now will feature uh, Adeline Cornelison's highlight of her second uh, Grand Prix freestyle performance. You will see there a PF pirouette and uh, I mean just looking at this very objectively yeah, this movement biomechanically and rhythmical features everything that could go possibly wrong in a PF pirouette and I find that also stunning to see this on the FEI channel her score in this performance was 86% which is only 6% below Edward Garl's and Totaler's world record and that is I mean here uh, I have it right in front of me the PF starts out with irregularity left hind foot higher than the right then the diagonal foot uh, fault is incorrect so the horse loses the diagonal rhythm yeah uh, I have to say uh, at one point it will step sideways out, it will hop under, it will refuse to move. If you look at this whole movement, yeah, I am very sad that it has happened that the combination Gal Todelas are gone, yeah, because they were a trendsetter yeah, for the sport, for the scoring. Here uh, at one point this uh, PF movement now will get biomechanically behind crossing which is an incorrect uh, movement. Yeah? So horse will eventually be afraid to step with his crossing foot on the other foot of the coronary band. So now the hind foot will step sideways. Yeah? Uh, I mean in this whole segment that the FEI TV channel shows here, yeah, there are incorrectness in that movement when you score this movement just on its own here's a sideways step to the right yeah you score this movement on your own is it has to be a four yeah and for that how do we justify 86 percent uh, just based on what we see here in this small little clip well uh, once again we encourage our viewers to watch the uh, the playlist that we put together for you and ultimately it's going to be uh, really the decision of the viewers whether or not the uh, uh, the test that they're witnessing deserves the score that it got and and ultimately it's going to be the viewers and the practitioners of dressage out there that will um, make their voices heard and um, uh, and really s speak out uh, for the welfare of the horse uh, because the future of the sport of dressage is is really on the line. It is in our hands. We have to talk for the horse. And based on these little tiny details that I see here, yeah, I have to encourage yeah, that judges education has to be way better. This is a slap in the face of the spectator and the educated horseman. And therefore here I close my uh, comment and uh, hope to see you again on uh, our next video, The Taming of Total Loss Volume 2. Thank you very much. We're professionalhorseservices.com and we'll be watching for you.